Dear Dynacom family, welcome. Brake testing is an annual test that is carried out on any winch to mark a point on the winch up to which the brake should be tightened to ensure that your brake is tightened properly. This is also done to ensure that your brake is not over or under tightened and it provides just the right amount of power in all the cases. Today we will try to make this process easily understandable, achievable and practical enough for everyone. Before starting all of this, there are some important points to consider. First of all, please inspect your brake linings. You have to make sure that your brake linings are of appropriate thickness. In case your brake linings are not of appropriate thickness, first of all, you have to change the brake lining and then you have to carry out the brake holding capacity test. Apart from the brake lining, you also have to check the brake band resting point. In case the distance between the top of this bolt and the brake band is not sufficient, you have to consult your maker's manual and then adjust either the bolt or the brake band lining as required. Make sure that you have converted the jack pressure values in form F16.10 to match the actual pressure units on your pressure gauge. This is very very important because some pressure gauge they measure it in bars, some of them they measure it is in kilogram per centimeter square and some in MPA. So this conversion is kind of necessary. Most importantly, it is highly unlikely that you will get the same tag distance for all the winches on board because all the winches are used differently over their lifespan and their usage is different. So it is neither practical nor realistic to get the same tag distance for every winch on board the vessel. So please measure the tag distance correctly after each adjustment. Before starting this test, please make sure that the chief engineer calibrates the pressure gauge on your jack. This is very, very important to get the correct readings when you are giving the pressure with the help of your pressure jack. And at the same time, please make sure that the hydraulic fluid in your pressure jack is up to the level and up to the mark. It is very much necessary to build the pressure inside a pressure jack. This is the point from where the liquid is filled up in our pressure jack. And before starting the test, we have already ensured that the liquid is properly filled. To start with, we have to find out all the relevant materials from our manuals in order to fill the form F16.10. Filling up the form F16.10 and finding out the correct pressure that your jack has to apply to perform a brake holding capacity test is very, very important. And it should be the first step whenever you are calculating the amount of pressure that is to be applied. Now, if you take the form F16.10, there are various columns. We will start filling up these columns one by one. For the newer vessel, all the calculation in the form F16.10 may already be there in the manual. And there will be a slight bit of conversion that might be applicable, but nevertheless, that is easy. For the older vessels, you might have to find each and everything one by one, and then you have to fill up the form. So what we will do right now is that we will start filling up the form one by one, just as you would do on almost all of the vessels. The jack pressure is mentioned as P, column P in the form F16.10. But that is one thing that we will fill in the last. We'll start from the column one and of course we'll enter today's date. The drum ID is WW13. This is the drum that is located on the poop tag. Now about the brake force column, we'll come back to it in just a minute. Looking at our winch manual, our drum dia is 580 millimeter. That is 58 centimeter. And we will mention that under column D. Next is the wire dia. Our wire diameter is 36 millimeter. That is 3.6 centimeters. Next column is jack area. Jack area, if we see at our winch manual, it is again mentioned over there. And the jack compression area as per our winch manual is 71.3 centimeters square. If it's not there, of course, you can measure it yourself as well. Once you are calculating manually the jack area, uh, some of the guys, they have been calculating this area at the bottom. This is not correct. What we have to actually calculate is how much jack area is being touched with this triangular plate and that area is this one. To be more specific, it is this area on top of the hydraulic jack piston that you can see highlighted in red color. Now in front of you guys, I will calculate the jack pressure area of my jack and show you guys how it is going to be done. This is the diameter of the piston on which the fluid is applying the pressure. And if we see from the readings, the reading is a 9.52 centimeters in diameter. This is the diameter of the piston on which the hydraulic fluid is applying the pressure. And let's do some conversions now. 9.52 divided by 2 as we have to find out the radius. The radius is 4.76. Multiply by 4.76. That comes to 22.65. And multiply by 22 divided by 7. That is the value of pi. R value comes to 71.20 which is very, very close to the maker's value of 71.3 centimeters square. 
So obviously we are going to use 71.3 centimeter square. But if you need to find out your jack pressure area, then this is how you have to find out. Okay, so I have calculated the area in front of you guys, which is very close to the one that maker has given. And usually this is the piston, which is completely separate from the jack. So this piston will obviously remain the same throughout the vessel's life. So if the maker has given an area of the jack pressure, please use that one. In case this piston changes, then obviously you have to calculate it manually. So this is the proper procedure to calculate the jack area whenever you're filling in the form F16.10. Next is L. L is the distance between the center of the winch and the point where you're going to apply the jack pressure. As per our winch manual, this distance is 1200 millimeter or 120 centimeter. As our form needs it in centimeters, so under the L, we will write 120. Next is the jack pressure. To jack pressure, we'll come back in a minute. Same goes for the tag distance. Tag distance also, we're going to leave for now. We are going to move to the last column, that is the ship's design MBL. As you can see, our ship design MBL is 843 kilonewton or it is 86 tons and we are going to mention same in the last column. Now our brake should render at 60% of the MBL. 60% of 86 tons is 51.6 tons and we are going to mention that under the render load. So now we have three columns left. One is the brake force, other is the jack pressure and final is the tag distance. We already know that the brake has to render at 51.6 tons. That means it should render at 51,600 kilograms tons to kilograms, simple conversion. We'll mention this value under the brake force F. So now at the end we have only two columns left, that is the jack pressure and the tag distance. Now we will find the jack pressure using the formula on the next page of form F16.10. The formula that is mentioned is P is equal to F into capital D plus small d divided by 2 into S into L. If we use this formula, we have all the rest of the values. And when we apply all the rest of the values, the value that we're going to get under the pressure P will be 185.75 kilogram per centimeter square. So now we have found this pressure that needs to be applied above which the brake should render. But remember our jack measures only in MPA. So we can convert this 185.75 into MPA. And when we do that, we find that the value is 18.21 MPA. That means until 18.21, it should be fine. Just above 18.21, the brake must render. So now when we have this value already, we are ready to perform our test and we are ready to apply this force to our winch in order to set the tag distance. Please consult your winch manual and as per your maker's manual, gather all the equipment that is necessary to perform the brake holding capacity test. For our winches, we need these triangular plates that we have already fitted on the flange. You have to turn the winch in order to bring that point over here from where these bolts are to be fitted. We have already fitted two of these triangular plates. Then of course you have to have your pressure jack which is down here. Then you have to have your top part and of course we have to have this stand point here as well. The point to remember over here is that you should put all of this equipment at the designated place where there is marking for brake holding capacity test. If you see over here, we have the same marking over here as well. This is the designated point for brake holding capacity test because remember, when you will be applying the pressure with the help of pressure jack, the pressure will not only be applied upward, it will be applied downward also. And if you're not putting your pressure jack at the right point, you might end up damaging your deck. We don't want that. And of course, our pressure jack is already here and it is also ready, my boson is cleaning it. When we are ready to perform the test, we have to turn the winch a little bit more to bring these triangular plates so that they meet with this attachment and they sit firmly on pressure jack. And that is the time when we should start tightening the brake and applying the pressure. Okay, Bossy, I think we should make it rest on the top of the pressure jack now. I will tell you, Bossy, a little more. Easy, 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 easy. Uh, pop, pop. So now we are aligning these holes so that they sit in line. Okay, once it is in line, we can put the bolt. Perfect. Okay, so now the nut and bolt is fitted, triangular plates are in place and now we are going to attach the pressure jack with it. Right now you can see that no pressure is applied, the pressure is zero. Okay, okay, person, close. Now we already have a marking over here that was of course the previous marking. What we will do is, we will tighten the brake just about 2-3 tons short of this marking. 
Wasn't tighten this, please. Okay. So now we have tightened it just short of our previous marking. And now is the time when we will start applying the pressure. And of course, at this point, don't forget to disengage your winch as well. Now I'm going to tell Boson to apply the pressure. It should render before 18.2 NPA. Okay, as you can see that the jack is putting the pressure on the flange. The pressure is now 1 MPA. Okay, the drum has slipped at around 15 MPA. Half turn more, tighten please. Develop the pressure. More. More. It is almost 18 now. The brake has not rendered yet. So we'll give it one pump more. Okay, Boson, one pump more. You see, it is coming, going up, coming down, going up, coming down. So it is rendering at this point. Okay, if you see the pressure now, it is just above 18.5. And the brake is rendering at this point. So this is the exact pressure at which we have to set the brake. Okay, as you guys can see, this is the exact tag distance at which the brake has rendered. And it is still behind the old marking. So definitely we need to change this marking. This marking was obviously incorrect. This is exactly the point at which the brake is rendering at 18.2 MPA. And this is the tag distance that we have to measure. From the center of this pin, to exactly here. This is the tag distance that we have to measure and this is the tag distance that we should write under T. And after writing this tag distance, our form F16.10 is correctly filled. And if we measure this tag distance of all of the winches, it is going to be different for each winch because each winch cannot have the same tag distance. Just before we close this video, here is a recap of everything that you have to fill in the form F16.10. First column is date tested. That will be obviously the date on which you have to test the brake. Then the drum ID. The drum ID, as you guys can see, we have stenciled over here, WW13. This is the drum ID that has to be mentioned in the column number two. Then is the third column, the brake force. This is the brake force that needs to be applied above which the brake has to render. This column, the brake force F and the render load in kilograms both of them should be the same. So we'll come to that in a minute. Next is the drum dia. This we have to find out from the maker's manual. If not in the maker's manual, all you have to do is from the center of the drum to the flange of the drum. Obviously, this is not the flange. This is the brake band. The flange is the one that is next to it, but you have to measure it manually if it is not given in the maker's manual, but usually it is. Next is the wire dia. Wire dia, you can find out from your wire certificate. The next is the jack area. Jack area, as I mentioned, that we have to either measure it manually or if it is given in your winch manual, then you have to find it out from there. I have already explained to you how to determine this exact value. But in general, you should keep in mind that the jack area is nothing more than the area where the inner piston is pressed up by the hydraulic oil. It is approximately this area that is shown in this video and not the entire jack area. Next is L. L is the distance between the center of the winch and the point where you're going to apply the jack pressure. Next is the jack pressure. As I've mentioned early, jack pressure is the pressure which will exert the load equal to the render load above which your BHC will be able to render. And that we have to find out from page number two of your form F16.10. And formula, I have already shown you guys and it is very easy calculation. Using that calculation, you can find out the relevant jack pressure. T is the tag distance. Tag distance is the last thing to be measured that we have to measure manually. Just for your reference, on our winches, the tag distance is going to be from this point that is already marked from the makers up to the center of this pin. But obviously, this we have to measure in the last. And the next is the render load, which is going to be the 60% of your ship's design MBL. Ship's design MBL will be mentioned in the last column. 60% of that will be mentioned in the render load. And the same will be mentioned under the brake force that needs to be applied. And one more thing to remind that don't forget to change the units wherever they are desired in order to fill up this form correctly. Okay, now we have already turned this marking. And just to show you guys that our brake testing was successful, I will tighten the brake up to this mark. And then we will apply the jack pressure to show you guys that the brake will render just above 18.2 NPA. Person tighten it. Our tag is exactly matching with this marking. Now we will test the brake again to show you guys that the brake is rendering just above 18.2 NPA. 
Now we will start building the pressure on this jack and uh, you will be soon, we will be seeing that the pressure will be increasing and then I will show you guys the jack piston also which will be slipping again and again and that is an indication that the brake is rendering. Okay guys, let's start pressing it. Okay, initially when we put this jack over here, this piston was exactly touching this place. But now as we have started building the pressure, the pressure has been exerted, the piston has been raised actually and now we are developing the pressure on the pressure jack. Now it should be uh, going up to 18.2 MPa and it should start rendering just after 18.2 MPa. Okay, 16 and wait, easy, easy. Okay, now it's coming to 18 MPa pump. It is exactly rendering just above 18.2. 18, 18.2 18 and render. 18, 18.2 and render. Okay, let's pump and show the people. Going up and render going up and render. It's a very small movement that you can see only when you're here. And the prime indication of this movement is this pressure gauge. You will see it go to, it will go to 18, just a bit 18.2, 18, 18.2 18 and render, 18, 18.2 18 and render. So this is how we are sure that we have set our brakes correctly. Now all the columns in form F16.10 are correctly filled. We correctly calculated the jack pressure, which is conforming to what is mentioned in our maker's manual. We correctly measure the tag distance and of course our brake testing is over. This is the correct method of performing a brake test whenever you are doing it on board your vessel. We hope that today's video was helpful and it is going to help you in your future brake testing on board your vessels. With a wish for smooth seas and tailwinds, it's goodbye for now. And thank you very much boys. Thanks a lot.